My name is Richard Gehrig. I am a professor of psychology at Stony Brook University, and my research focuses on what we call the experience of narrative worlds. So to explain what I mean by that, I want you to imagine that you have a sat down with a book and you start to read it, you read a page or two, and you find that you've become cognitively and emotionally engaged with that book. So we would say you've been transported to that narrative world. And so what we try to study in my lab is how does that work? How, how are you transported to narrative worlds and what are the consequences when that happens? So to give you a deeper sense of what we mean, let me describe one phenomenon that we call anomalous suspense. Um, and to do that, I want to describe to you a famous scene from an early James Bond film called Goldfinger. Uh, and in this scene, what has happened, Goldfinger has captured Bond and has Bond tied down on this enormous plate of gold. And there's a laser that's coming that is going to split Bond down through the middle. And there's some dialogue between Goldfinger and Bond. And Bond finally says, do you expect me to talk? And Gold Goldfinger replies, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. So there is clearly some suspense in the moment because is Bond going to die? Well, here's the thing. Uh, if you were to pause the, the movie at exactly that moment, I can tell you almost shot for shot what happens because, of course, Bond doesn't die. Um, but when I'm actually transported to the narrative, when I am in that scene again, when I'm watching it unfold, when I'm watching that laser come toward Bond, I feel a lot of suspense. And we call that anomalous suspense because typically you expect suspense to mean uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. And what's interesting about narrative experiences is that you can know perfectly well what's going to happen. But because you're transported within that world, you don't know what's going to happen. And so that's a very powerful example of what it means to be transported to a narrative world. So a lot of the research that I've done with my students has been to try to understand how does transportation work, what are the consequences. And we're particularly interested in the way in which uh, people participate in their narrative experiences. So we have this idea that when you are transported to a narrative world, you become a participant. You are emotionally engaged or cognitively engaged. And again, to give you an example of that, um, in one of the projects that we did in my lab, we had students come in and watch brief movie excerpts. And one of those excerpts showed uh, a young woman, a girl, who was about to pick up a, a ringing phone. And we knew, the viewers knew, that if she picked up the phone, it was going to explode. And the participants in our study said things like, no, 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 no. So that's what we mean by participation. We would call that a participatory response. Uh, and what we have documented in various ways is that the kinds of participatory responses, the way in which people participate, has a major impact on how they uh, experience the rest of the narrative. So to give you a concrete example of that, we conducted a project, for example, where we had students come in and read a uh, brief text. And uh, one of the texts was about a student who was trying to decide, should she stay home and study or should she go to a party? Um, and it turns out that the participants in our experiment, some, some people thought she should go to the party. Some people thought, thought that she should stay home. Um, and then, of course, the story continues. And the story gets to an outcome that is either a good or a bad outcome for the character in the story who was making this decision. And what we showed is as a function of our students, the people who read our stories, their own responses to the character's decision, it made it easier or harder for them to accept the outcome to the story. And that's meant to sound very familiar from real life because when you have preferences about outcomes and the wrong thing happens, often it's very hard to accept that outcome. So if you think of what it's like to go to a movie, you sit next to a friend, you watch the same movie, the same movie has unfolded in front of your eyes, and yet when the movie ends and you start to talk about it, you, you have had very different experiences. You've had a very different response. We attribute those circumstances to this idea of participation, that even though it's been the same movie, because you participate in different ways, because you have different preferences, because you wish for different outcomes, you've had a different experience. And so what I often say to people when I talk about my research is that as they're having a narrative experience, I would like them to pay attention to those responses, to the way in which they're cognitively engaged, the way in which they're emotionally engaged, engaged so that they have that opportunity to have a sense of really how wonderful and vivid these narrative worlds are and how wonderful it is to be transported to these kinds of worlds. Mm -hmm.